I can't imagine if when I was 12 years old, a Backstreet Boy had tweeted at me and said, hey, I really like what you're doing. I, I would have lost my mind, okay? And so I like to think of that every time I leave a comment. I think, you know what? I'm someone's Backstreet Boy. <laughs> Today's episode is about building a community. Hey, my name is Megan Tonjes. I'm Tonjes here on YouTube, and I am a musician and body positive activist who makes daily content about news and culture. Basically, I have an opinion and I share it all of the time. So when I first started making YouTube videos, I was 19. I had no idea what I was doing, so I was just making videos for my friends, and that's kind of how I started out. I was making videos about my life, what I was going through, what I was thinking, and that kind of grew into more of an understanding of who was attracted to my videos. Over time, I definitely started to realize there were similarities with the people that were attracted to what I was making. So a lot of times I find in my audience people who are struggling with their weight, struggling with um, their self-love, their sexuality, um, maybe have issues at home, and just kind of feel a little left out, a little left of center. And I tend to attract people like that because I went through that when I was growing up. I think sometimes we get a little in our heads about, okay, who's watching me and what are the demographics? And we can go into analytics and we can look at those things and we can see these numbers that you know make sense to a certain extent, are good when you're doing branded stuff, you understand who you're reaching. But ultimately, if you're interested in the audience that's watching you, I encourage you to actually reach out and jump in the comments and jump in the conversations and research the people that you keep seeing showing up on video after video. I mean, people are you know really easily putting their information out there as far as their age and where they're from and what they like and their pronouns and what shows they watch. And so if you take the time to really invest in learning about the people that watch your content, you're gonna get a lot more information and very layered information about who likes your stuff. Anytime that people feel like they're being seen, they are going to engage more. So a lot of times I will heart comments, I will pin comments, because you can't respond to every single thing, but you can respond to a few bigger things and you can kind of acknowledge and validate everyone else that's leaving a comment. Let them know, hey, I see you, you're important to me. And that really is as simple as using those tools. You're also gonna find other ways to engage with them and interact, and that's gonna be inspiring to your content. If all of a sudden I notice there is a lot of people from Australia that watch a very specific TV show and they really like these other YouTubers, maybe I'll start watching that TV show and make a video about it. Maybe I'll collaborate with that YouTuber they all love. Not only are you gonna find people that are gonna inspire content, whose conversations and your comments are gonna push you to make better stuff, but you're also gonna find other people who are making content that wanna work with you. The most important thing that I do is I pay attention. I really pay attention to how I view things, how I consume content, how I interact with other people. And so if I see another content creator putting something out there and I automatically feel the desire to respond or to share, I pay attention. I lock that away in my mind for later because there's something there. There's some kind of little bit of magic that I need to um, reverse engineer and figure out for my own channel. When I was moving to Los Angeles, I drove here with a friend and we would kind of annoyingly call each other BB, BB. So eventually when it came to, uh, you know, I need a name to call these viewers because I don't always like using subscribers or viewers or fans and everyone has like a really cool last name and they have all these really cool ideas for what they can call their like army or their, their family or whatever it is. I didn't really have a great last name that I could just like turn into a cool group name. So the BBs are what we call them. One of my big beautiful BBs, it's Meg and Tanjas and it is Sunday, which means it is... It's gender neutral, it's easy, it applies to everyone, and it's really just another way of me calling them a friend. In episode one, we talked about building your community. How by simply watching the shareability of your videos and the engagement by your audience, you can figure out the things that you're doing right or not so right. Like what you learned? Don't forget to subscribe by clicking the button below and make sure to check out similar episodes.